This will be our last video lesson on protein function from Chapter 5, and we'll be looking at the motor protein kinesin. First of all, it's a motor protein that associates with microtubules. That's its target protein. Remember, with myosin, our target protein was actin, and it has a different role within the cell. However, if we look at the figure at the top of the screen here, we see that the structure is very similar to that of myosin. For each of the monomers, we have a globular head, we have a straight neck region, and an alpha helical tail, and then those tails form a coiled-coil interaction to form our fundamental unit, the dimer. The other thing we notice, and that's depicted in our cartoon structure here, is that the neck is shorter in kinesin. We still need those necks to move our heads, but the movement is slightly different, and so we don't need to wrap those light chains around our necks to strengthen and support them in our movement. We still need light chains, but they serve a different function, and for that reason they're at the other end of the molecule. So remember with myosin we had two light chains per neck, four per dimer. In this case we have one light chain per monomer, two in the dimer. And the goal, the role of these light chains is to grab hold of a vesicle, and we're going to walk it from one end of the cell to the other. So that's the other difference. Kinesin moves by stepping instead of grabbing. Remember with myosin we grabbed opposite muscle fibers and we pulled them together to contract the muscle. In this case we're going to pick up a vesicle and we're going to walk or step it from one end of the molecule to the other. Another similarity is that we're going to move those heads by ATP hydrolysis. Now we notice another difference here, and that is with myosin, remember, we bundled a bunch of those dimers together to form the thick filament, all the tails associated together and multiple heads contacting our target protein, actin. In this case, the fundamental unit is just the dimer, because our goal is different. We want to move that cargo from one place to another, and we just need one set of heads to do that. The other thing that's different is, remember with myosin, the heads worked independently of each other. In this case, however, these two heads work like our two feet. We need both feet to walk in a forward direction, and we certainly don't need more than two feet. So here we are, we're carrying our cargo bound to the end of our tails, and we've got the two heads here. It's bound to tubulin. Remember, tubulin is composed of alpha and beta tubulin. Alpha in the darker blue and beta in the lighter blue. And here's our what we're going to call our leading head in orange. It's bound specifically to the beta subunit. That'll be our right foot for now. And here's our left foot in yellow, and it's currently bound to ADP, and it's not bound to tubulin. So this is our starting position. The first step in our sequence is the same as myosin, that is we're going to bind ATP, but the effect is very different. Remember with myosin, when that head bound ATP, it let go of the actin. In this case, however, with kinesin, once that head binds ATP, it grabs on more tightly to that beta subunit, and that produces a little bit of a kink in the neck and that causes that trailing head in yellow to swing forward by about 180 degrees. So you'll notice here's another difference. Remember our goal is to move that cargo towards that positive end and simply by moving my left foot forward I'm already moving in that direction. So the force generating step is the first thing instead of the last thing as we saw in myosin. So here we are we have a new leading head, that's in yellow here, currently bound to ADP, and our new trailing head in orange is bound to ATP. As we swing that new leading head forward, it quickly binds the next subunit of tubulin, beta subunit, and as it does so, it releases its ADP. So now we have a new leading head in yellow, bound to a beta subunit, we have a new trailing head in orange, and that's bound to ATP. In our next step, that trailing head is going to hydrolyze ATP and release inorganic phosphate, and it's still bound to ADP. Remember, this is where our previous trailing head started. So now we've put our left foot forward, and our right foot is up. 
This is how the kinesin motor protein works. It steps one foot forward at a time and each foot moves in relationship to one another. So they don't work independently of one another. They work in concert, in cooperation with one another. That's another distinctive difference. And in this case we're moving in one direction. The cargo remains attached and the head, one head is always bound. We're always moving in that forward direction until we get where we want to go. And so we say that the movement is processive. Now one another way in which myosin and kinesin are similar is that they're both far, part of a family called NTPases. Remember NTP stands for nucleotide triphosphate and NTPases are enzymes that digest or hydrolyze a nucleotide triphosphate. So that would apply both to kinesin and myosin because they hydrolyze ATP in order to move their heads or levers. They're also part of what's called a superfamily, that is to say there are many examples of this, and they have a phosphate binding loop, and so they're called P-loop NTPases. You'll need this information in answering some of the homework questions. So an example of how we might use kinesin as a motor protein, it might move cargo between the cell body of a neuron and its axons. That can be quite a distance and so we need to make sure that it's going to hold on to that cargo, remember that's why we need the light chains, and that it's going to keep walking forward until it gets to where it needs to go. This concludes our studies in Chapter 5. In our next lesson, we'll begin our studies in Chapter 6. We'll begin to examine a class of proteins that function as biological catalysts, that is, enzymes. We'll see why there is a need for this class of proteins and, in general, how they function. We'll also be struck by the levels of reaction rate enhancement they make possible.